Lakeisa Renee, and I am here with the amazing, talented VC Dupree here at the New Jersey HorrorCon. How's the HorrorCon going for you so far? Man, I'm having a blast. I'm having a blast. I always say it ain't no fans like the horror fans, so yeah. I agree because the horror fans are the absolute best. They love us so much, and especially to see you know our kind, you know, in here being supported is so amazing. Because it's not many of us. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's, it's so great to see. Out in the first five minutes, either on the toilet or doing it. So you know. <laughs> so I'm a success story, baby. <laughs> So speaking of horror and movies, so let's talk about your role in Jason Takes Manhattan as Julius. So how did that come about? You know, what was that experience like, you know, working with Kane and the cast and crew? So tell me about it. Well, actually, the um, it came about in the same process that most most uh, roles do. You know, my agent got a, uh, it's called a breakdown, you know. And he said, hey, there's this movie, blah, blah, blah. I didn't know it was a Jason my ass, I didn't even know I was filming a Friday the 13th until I was in the waiting room at the airport on my way to shoot it. Yeah, one of the actors, is, uh, she told me, she, she was like, yeah, uh, are you in Friday the 13th? I'm like, no, I'm going to shoot Ashes to Ashes, baby. I don't know what you're talking about. She goes, uh, are you playing a boxer? She goes, yeah. She goes, idiot, you're going to shoot Friday the 13th. I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. All I know is it's my first star in movie, and they were paying me, da 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 Cool. So... I just say that to say it was a blast shooting the movie. Um, it's weird because when you make a movie, I always say it's kind of like you know having a baby. You know, you put all this love and nurture into it, and you put it out in the world and hope everybody think it's cute. <laughs> you know, um, this same thing. You know, we just did the movie, and um, yeah, it is what it is. You know, but yeah, working with Kane was off the chain, and. Um, you know, we kind of knew we were laying down something for one, because as I said, brothers always get taken out in the first few minutes. So that part of it was already, you know, in the can. But yeah, man, just doing it, I knew it was going to be something that was going to be uh, long lasting for a while. So I heard that you were actually hitting him for real in those. <laughs> <laughs> I put them all airborne, baby. Yeah, yeah. We had agreed to just like, boom, just he said, VC, do what you need to do. I'm like, nah, are you sure about that? And so, you know, I touched his stomach. He had a bunch of pads on and shit. And then the rest is, uh, oops. I, yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, we had a good time. We had a good time. And it's, it's lasted. You know, my fans get younger and younger as I get older and older. <laughs> so, weird question. Do you still have that head, you know, when it got decapitated and knocked off? Do you still have that as a souvenir? I had it up until two or three months ago. Uh, there's this um, really famous uh, auction called uh, uh, Hollywood Prop Store. And they had just been in my garage, you know, getting old and starting to dry rot or whatever. So I'm like, you know what? Let me put the first one out. Put the first one out. It did so well. I'm like, well, shit, I got one more. So, <laughs> so no, I do not have them anymore. Um, but, you know, somebody um, can really cherish them, you know, more than I'm sure they're not in somebody else's garage. You know what I'm saying? Cool. That's a cool prop and, and piece to have. Yeah. yeah. So I also heard you were in Freddy's Nightmares, correct? Yeah, that was, I mean, I was I was a kid. I literally just started out, and um, I don't even know. I've never even seen the episode. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was one of my first first roles and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's a credit. So, you know, when you're first starting out, all you're looking for is them credits, baby. <laughs> I agree. So I have to say... One of my favorite movies of all time is South Central. Oh, my God. And when I seen you were here, I'm like, listen, I'm, I may be younger, but that's my movie. And I still watch yes, it to this day, literally. Yes. Yeah. So tell me about that experience and, you know, why you why do you think people love it so much still to this day, especially, you know, in our black culture is just, you know, timeless. Well, for one, that movie came out during the time that all, like, the um, uh, Boys in the Hood and all these. And, but... It just happened to be set in the inner city. That wasn't the the guns and the violence and the gang. That wasn't the star of the movie. You know what I'm saying? And I think the reason that it's lasted all this time is because it just transcends everyone's exp every um, dynamic. By that meaning, you know, every father, a real man, you all about your kid, you all about your son. And this guy just happened to be OG Bobby Johnson, 
happened to be in the inner city, but still his struggle was the same. He was looking looking out for his 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 his, uh, his son, you know. So um yeah, man, the story just transcends all um, all racial barriers and. Once again, those fans, they get younger and younger, and everybody, loco, loco. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'll throw him a deuce. <laughs> the, the whole story, the forgiveness aspect of it, you know, yeah. wanting to see your son live a, a better life yeah. than you, it's just yeah. quite amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of horror and outside of South Central, what else have you worked on that, you know, the people may not know? Um, well, I actually currently... I'm in the third year of a um, of a commercial campaign that has just been a godsend. It's um, uh, it's a national campaign. I always say it's like you know, flow from progressive. You know, uh, what's dude's name from State Farm, Jake, and whatever. Yeah, but it, it's it's uh, with discount tires and America's tires, and I'm sure everybody's seen these commercials. And um, every like three four months, I fly to Arizona, and then we shoot anywhere from ten to twelve spots to last you for the next four months until we go. So that's currently what I'm doing. And then um, I also have a production company we just formed it and we're uh, developing original content, animation, TV, films, and um, yeah, be looking on, be looking out for it. So that's amazing, congratulations. Yeah. If you ever need some media queens or you know, writers or anything of that nature, we act too, you 100%. know. Think about us, me and Tammy, okay? <laughs> All right, so you've been in the game for a long time. You know, for up-and-coming actors, what advice would you give them to navigate through this industry? Because it can be very hard, defeating at times. You know, you can get a lot of work, no work. So what advice do you want to give to up-and-coming actors in particular? I always tell, tell people coming, coming along right now, they have so much more at their access than me, people of my age, my generation had when we started out. Right now, you got phones. You can download apps. You can you just do it. Somebody walks up to me and they're like, "Yeah, I got this idea, or whatever I want you." I'm like, "Okay, well, you know, where's it at? Oh, it's up here. Okay, well, you got to put it either here, you got to put it on that phone. Do it. There's no excuse. Every city in this country has a film festival, and with all different categories, you can do a three to five minute short. There's no excuse." So, you know, you can talk about it all you want. <laughs> this guy here. See, I guess that I guess that ass whooping I put on him 30 years ago, I guess it wasn't enough. <laughs> it's, it's something about things with Kane. Winning the fight. I don't think he won See, without learn. a fucking head. Come <laughs> on. Never it's just something about me getting photobombed with, with Kane. It's this, I tell you, the, the interview I did with him the other day, I don't know if you saw... But it was outrageous. I got photobombed like four times, video right. bombed, I should say. And it was some it. interesting things happening. I'll show you after. I don't want to talk about it on the camera, but it was crazy. Oh, my That's God. Yes, but back to where we were on the question of if I... Saying, it's just like, literally, there's no, there's no excuse. You know what I mean? Um, there's so many different avenues to get your product out. And I always say it's, it's weird because, yeah, you can have a story that's kind of you know opaque everybody you know it's a general idea but the musings of your mind only you can think of that that's the shit you need to put down that's the stuff you have no excuse for putting it on your phone shoot it just do it baby don't talk about it be about it <laughs> I agree. Look. <laughs> so VC what do you want to say to all of your fans all over the world who have supported you through the horror genres every genre you've been in what do you want to say to them for being there by your side through all these years just thank you just thank you I mean a lot of times it kind of goes without saying and you know when you don't have contact like whether it be at a convention or run into somebody or whatever but I definitely feel the love and um, appreciate the support and what you see is what you get. <laughs> you know, sometimes we see celebrities or people in the industry or somebody you look up to and you meet them and you're like, damn, okay, not what I thought. I'm the real deal. It's me, 100%. Who produced, baby? <laughs> and I want to say personally, thank you so much for this opportunity, taking the time to interview with me and support our podcast, Tales from the Media. You are so amazing, awesome, and humble. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you. I appreciate you too. Thank you.